He is risen. Welcome to our Easter Tuesday reflection from St Denis. I am a Christian because Christ is risen. We are Christians because Christ is risen. Christianity exists because Christ is risen. That was true on Easter Sunday, yesterday, today and forever. If you'll pardon the pun, it is dogma for life, not just for Easter. This is the point Apostle Paul is making in his first letter to the Corinthians. Listen to these verses from chapter 15. Let me remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins. Just as the scriptures said, he was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. Paul sums up the gospel or good news in verse 3 and 4. He passes on truths that are of first or fundamental importance. Christ died. Christ was buried. Christ was raised. So the good news centres on a death. It was not the method or manner of Jesus' death that made it unique or central to the gospel. Thousands of people have been crucified before Jesus and thousands were crucified after. No, it was the purpose of his death that makes it unique and makes it good news. Jesus died for our sins. More fully, Jesus died on our behalf to deal with our sins. It is true that many details of his death were unique and they form the vast panoramic background of God's plan of salvation. The darkness, the earthquakes, the ripping of the curtain in the temple. Unique enough for the centurion in charge to declare, truly, this was the Son of God. But the purpose of the death of Jesus is the great rock on which we stand in faith. The good news also centres on a life, the resurrection life of Jesus. This was not simply a resuscitation or restoration of the former life. It was a transformation. Lazarus was brought back to life with the same body, which continued to age, decay and then die. Jesus was raised to a transformed existence in a resurrection body. Imperishable, enduring, everlasting, eternal, glorious and powerful. So the good news starts with the purposeful death of Jesus on our behalf and to deal with our sins and continues now and for eternity with the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. And the good news is literally a matter of life and death for us, for our death and for our lives. The good news for us is that because Jesus was raised from death to resurrection life, we too will be transformed through death to resurrection life. We can look forward beyond death to our own resurrection, an end to all the limitations frustrations and disabilities we experience in this life. But the resurrection is not just a doctrine to, believe, to be believed as our ticket to the afterlife. The resurrection is a power that can be experienced here and now. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 14, Paul says, God who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus. We don't have to wait until we die to experience God's resurrection power in our lives. In fact, resurrection and transformation are God's business on earth now. What part of your life do you want God to transform through the power of his Holy Spirit?
I know some areas of my life that I would like transformed, my prayer life, my witness to friends and colleagues, my spiritual leadership within our home. What things would you like God to transform now and for the rest of your life? Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, thank you that you raised your Son from death to life for your glory and for our good. Please transform our lives with the resurrection power of your Holy Spirit. Transform our weaknesses, our anxieties, our suffering. Transform our wills, our witness and our worship. In the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen.